Hello, I'm Michael Hartle, creator of the Ruby on Rails tutorial and principal author at Learn Enough. Learn Enough is based on the idea that when it comes to many technical skills, you don't have to learn everything to get started. You just have to learn enough to be dangerous. Over the past several years, I and my co-founders have been working to make a series of Learn Enough tutorials focusing on the skills needed for modern software development. But that's not where I started. My background is actually in physics, and when I was a graduate student at Caltech in Pasadena, California, I taught the core physics curriculum for five years, where I was a popular instructor with the students and was recognized with the Lifetime Achievement Award for Excellence in Teaching. Now, physics is a fascinating subject, but at the end of the day, you have to admit that it's not that important for most people to learn. At Learn Enough, I'm applying the teaching and writing skill set that I developed at Caltech to a subject that is important for huge numbers of people, what's usually called learning to code. But it's really much more than that. It includes not just computer programming, but also the tools used every day by software developers and the ability to figure out how to solve technical problems on your own, a skill we call technical sophistication. As a result, the Learn Enough tutorials are useful for anyone who works with software developers, as well as for those who aspire to become developers themselves. Let's take a look at how they work. All of the Learn Enough tutorials and the Ruby on Rails tutorial are available as ebooks, downloadable videos, and structured self paced online courses. The Learn Enough tutorials are as self contained as possible but they also build on each other, showing the interconnections between the different technologies. Let's take a look at what they cover. The first Learn Enough tutorial is Learn Enough Command Line to be Dangerous. The command line is a text-based interface for interacting with computers. Here, we'll change into the directory for a website project, and then list the directory contents. Now, let's open the project with a text editor which is a specialized tool for editing an important data format known as plain text. I'll now paste in a line that I had previously copied and then look at the changes with a so-called version control system called git, which is a program for tracking changes in projects. We can use git diff to see the exact difference that we've introduced, and then we can use git commit to record the change. Now, this file that we've edited contains an especially important kind of plain text, Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML, which is the language of the World Wide Web. This particular piece of HTML is designed to include a cascading style sheet, or CSS, which is the design language of the web. And now, we can return to the command line and use Git to push our changes to a remote server, thereby deploying our site to the live web. Then, when we refresh the browser, we see how the CSS changes this into this. This website is actually built using a powerful tool called a static site generator, which includes layout templates that let us avoid repeated code. The site also shows how to make a nice three-column layout like this image gallery. Now, the image gallery doesn't work with plain HTML and CSS, but we can activate it using JavaScript the only programming language that can be executed inside of web browsers. The result is that, by clicking on thumbnail images in the first column, we can change the main image in the second column and the description in the third column. We also learn how to use JavaScript as a general purpose programming language, including writing shell scripts, which are programs that can be run at the command line. Here we see a program to download a page from Wikipedia and extract the paragraphs. We use the same basic approach to learn Ruby, a friendly and elegant programming language especially known for its use in web development. Here's the same Wikipedia paragraph script in Ruby instead of JavaScript. And here's a simple web application in Ruby, which includes an HTML form that we can use for detecting palindromes. Finally, the Ruby on Rails tutorial puts everything together, using the command line, a text editor, Git, HTML, CSS and Layout, JavaScript, and Ruby to build a professional-grade web application and deploy it to the live web. I hope you enjoyed that short tour of the Learn Enough tutorials. And remember, you don't have to learn everything. You just have to learn enough to be dangerous.